Hello, and thank you for joining me. You're here with data science teacher Brandon, and we're going to talk about the difference between categorical cross entropy and sparse categorical cross entropy. I personally was very confused when to use these. I, I The definition of sparse is kind of contrary to what I had first originally had thought. Okay. So what we're doing, I'm just looking up a data set that I have in my GitHub reservoir that is predicting penguins. So the idea here is we're going to predict different classes. We're going to predict which species the penguin is. But really the idea here is we have three classes uh, and we're going to do categorical cross entropy or sparse categorical cross entropy. Okay? And we can use both of them. They should work the same. They generally do. They don't necessarily start in the same place in their training. So they will evolve a little bit differently. But the transformation that happens inside the model essentially makes them exactly the same. It's just how do you want to put the data into your model. So because we're dealing with TensorFlow, we have we cannot use the species as it is, which is Adelaide, if you look at Adelaide Gento Chinstrap, should three different species of penguins if you did not know. But here what we're gonna need to do is we I use I use SK learning. This is really good and it's really great for when you want to look at your predictions later on. You're able to use label encoder to pull back what the original values were. So convert, it's going to convert this to number. It's able to convert. So now we have 0, 1, 2 instead of the original data set. Now we can use this with our TensorFlow model, but we can also convert the label encoder back or using the label encoder, we convert back to from these numbers back to the original. Things. And we can use that when we're analyzing our predictions and stuff. So just making our X and Y variables, I'm not going to do a train test split just to make this a little sense example as simple as possible and we can do using validation split we can do a split while we're training so making this is as simple as possible we're going to look at sparse categorical cross entropy first okay so the idea this is most commonly used when you're concerned about the size of your training data and you're feeding it into your model feeding in a large vector of kind of a one hot encoded vector can be quite large and, and a big thing for models. So this is kind of a more condensed way to fit it. And the word sparse comes from because it allows integer labels without one hot encoding. It's it, to me, sparse means a one hot encoded vector. But really, they're saying this because it, it's kind of a little bit easier to put in. So it's, it's sparser, it uses less data as you put it into your model, less space as you put it into your model. Okay, so we just have uh, a dense layer to start off, I'm going to do an input sh shape of four which is the number of columns I have in my features and then one target over here. So I'm just gonna give it Y just as the column as it is, as the zero, one, two, okay? So no transformation there, okay? So here I'm gonna compile it with sparse categorical cross entropy and then I'm gonna optimize it with SGT, just chosen a uh, random, <laughs> didn't really put a lot of thought into finding the best optimizer for this. Okay, so we're gonna train this and the idea here, and you see we're, we're training successfully, It's one concept to note is it depends very much. We are going to start in different places. So these two models will develop very differently. But if we were to spend a lot of time on the training, we should be able to get them to the exact same place, whether regardless if we use categorical or sparse categorical cross entry. What happens with the sparse is that we're giving it one column. The transformation happens is that's why we need three neurons on the outside, because this is going to predict still one hot encoded probability distribution. Uh, basically how much what is the probability of each class and each class will have its own column so that's it's going to happen inside the model but it will save space by giving in our model this this one column vector instead of uh, uh, a one hot encoded vector like we get on the outside. so it does happen anyways it essentially is just how you want to put the data into your model in this situation the model will do the transformation into the one hot encoded vector so that linear algebra can happen on this data set here I'm just going to assign, just making sure that we're starting fresh again. So assigning X and Y, our four values and our species. We're going to do one thing differently here to use the categorical cross entropy. Okay, so this is, we're going to use tf.cares.utils.to underscore categorical. So it's basically kind of like pandas get dummies. And we're going to say the number of classes is three. So I'm going to give it my Y vector. And what's going to happen is from this Y vector, that we have right here, which is just a series in a data frame. And you can see here zeros, one, you can't say ones, but there's ones is there as well. So it's just a, a series, uh, a regular pandas series. Here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this with the 
You could use actually you could use Penta's get dummies to do the exact same thing here, but we're going to use the utils to transform this into zero, one, and two is going to be in the positions right here. Okay, so those are our positions. I'm going to train this model. So just noticing here, I'm giving it now categorical cross entropy for my my second version of this model. And just noticing here, the only difference that happened in here is that y is now one hot encoded vector versus uh, the one column with three different classes in that one column. So we can train it here, we'll get the same thing. Again, noticing that they are starting off at different points. So every time you rerun this, truthfully, we probably need a lot more than 30 epochs to train this well. And we probably need a lot more complex model to predict this well. So this was not so much about predicting and training. I really just wanted to show two different ways that you, or really how sparse categorical cross entropy and categorical cross entropy work and how really to transform your data to be able to put it into your model. But on the inside of your model, when it comes to the prediction, really as your model is training, it is going to be this one hot encoded vector. So this, your model will pre-process the sparse version, this, this kind of lighter version of the data where it's just one column of data, just like this, well, using zeros and ones. This is one column of data and we're gonna transform that uh, in the model or before we put it in the model. So it's really the same thing. You, it is a little counterintuitive in terms of the names because I would have thought it would have been a little bit differently, but it actually works the differently. So sparse is when you have one column and categorical without the sparse is when you are feeding it a one hot encoded vector. And that is usually used when you're not concerned about the space of the one hot encoded vector. So thank you very much for joining me today and I will see you next time.